license, insurance registration, demand ID, act like a Nazi cop, and then when you start to question them as a man who swore an oath of office, then they start saying that they're, and then when they charge you, they say you interfered with the duties of a peace officer. So they go from a policy enforcement officer back to a peace officer and claim that they can now tase you. It's a complete and utter nonsense. Do you think they're switching hats there? They're switching hats. They don't even know which hat they're wearing. Have you they ever run read? Back, they run back to the peace officer line when they charge you, but they were engaging you as a policy enforcement officer, which doesn't apply to a man who's standing in common law jurisdiction. Have you ever read the definition of peace officer in the Criminal Code of Canada? Yes, I have. Are you aware that you do not have to be an agent for the government in order to be a peace officer? That is correct. We can all engage in that capacity. So if I wanted to hire you as a peace officer, do you think you're up to the task? Yep, but I don't need a taser to do it. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Luke. Okay. And Warren, the next thing I know, I'm the guy who's spouting to my friends, right? And and they're saying, well, does it work? Where, where do you go with this? You know, and and it and it's not just about money, though. I guess that's the thing I got to say, because you know, you guys have all touched on it, and it really is the you know the light within. We know it's we know we know it's wrong. You know, we all we're all good people. We all know in our hearts we're we're good people. And there's no need for other people to be telling people how you know we're all living in peace. So that's where I get irked is where you know I'm just trying to live a good life. I wanna get out of the city and I, and I don't need somebody telling me how to do that. And, and so I wanna break free. Let's hear from Christine, eh? And then uh, we'll post it up in the book. You can do whatever you want, sister. <laughs> so, well, I heard everybody talk and uh, everybody resonated with me. Now, I have a little bit more to share. I come from a real colonist country. And I went through With an hell. accent like that. No. <laughs> Transylvania. <laughs> and it's for real. <laughs> And um, I went through hell to get here. And why I did that, it's because I wanted freedom. At 18, actually, I tried crossing the borders, and I got caught, um, got thrown in jail for whatever political discrepancies that I had with the government. And um, you know, I, I, I went through hell to actually obtain freedom. So when I came here, I was really happy, but then it started to change. I'm seeing day by day that communism is coming here. Mm -hmm. So unless we stand up and do something, it's not going to, to be pretty. You know, in, in Romania, I mean, for 30 years they pushed us and did whatever they wanted with us because nobody would stand up. Everybody was afraid that they would, you know, whatever they, it would happen to them till the day when everybody was fed up. And that day is coming really, really fast here. I see it. Unless we find remedy, Unless which comes with the heart. I know. The, you know, and, and when I talk to a lot of people, they say, oh, that's not true, you know. Here, it's freedom. You have everything you want. I said, well, everything I want except freedom of speech and you know, <laughs> the other things. But yeah, you know, I'm being told what to eat and what supplements I can take and what I cannot take. In Romania, I wasn't allowed to eat what I wanted because you couldn't buy it. Now here, they are taking it away from us. So. We do have to do something, and um, I'm really, really honored to be here. Two days ago, we found out about this meeting. We drove down six hours to be here. Wow. Oh, we're glad you did. Yeah, we are very glad we did. And tomorrow at 9, or today at 9, I have patience, so oh. <laughs> I don't know how to take it back home. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very glad to be here. So yes, you know. We were talking to our kids about, you know, what would happen if the power got shut off, the grid got shut off, and they weren't, and if they blocked the roads, it wouldn't let us leave the city. Um, they know that half the population would die in 30 days. Mm -hmm. they, just, they know that. Okay, they've actually printed studies to, 
you know, running those numbers and stuff. You know, why would the government need to know that kind of information? <laughs> so, you know, what we told the kids, well, we have, a, we have a safe place to go. We have supplies. We can get out of the city. I, I've made arrangements, you know, if it ever happens. I've so, got a Hummer, if this way to say. No need roads. <laughs> so, you know, kids, kids are kids, right? They, they accept what you tell them. They're, you know. So Brooklyn was over at a friend's house. Um, in this neighborhood, and I guess she was talking to her friend, hey, do you have a safe place to go if the power gets shut up? <laughs> and she's like, well, I don't know. And so she went to her parents, mom, dad, hey, do you have a safe place to go if we're hearing this stuff? <laughs> well, Brooklyn's family's all ready to go, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they called social services oh. and said, we're concerned about the mental welfare of our children. <laughs> so, so they, you know, of course we don't know they called because uh, you know they don't call you up away by the way. So uh, this social worker shows up at their school and interviews Jade and Brooklyn in a room without parents, without a teacher present. And after asking them a whole bunch of questions, 